everyone who's joining us this evening for our Getting Ready for Lakehead webinar series. This is a webinar series we've been running every Tuesday evening, talking about things as we prepare for getting ready for Lakehead for our fall intake. Tonight is all about being a family and supporter. So the things that we can do to assist and support you as your family member heads off to Lakehead this fall. We are so grateful that you're here this evening. I'm going to spend some time with us. Um, and hopefully get a lot of questions answered that you may have moving forward. Now, before I get too far into the webinar this evening, I want to give you some basic instructions on how to use Zoom. I feel like we've been doing this for a while now, but every time it seems like, you know, things happen. So let's just give it a go. So just so you know, anyone who is attending this webinar as a participant um, has been muted for the entire presentation portion of the webinar. So you can sit back, relax, chill. You're good to go. Um, just the host, and I have some great hosts that I'll be introducing in a few minutes as well, have mics and cameras on. But that does not mean that we don't want you to engage with us. So please, please, please uh, let us know your questions, ask us questions, engage with us so we can get those questions answered for you this evening. And how are you going to go about doing that? I'm going to tell you. So on the navigational bar of this webinar, you will see a little Q&A button, and that allows you to post your uh, questions to us. We really love it when you post questions. We'll work then behind the scenes to answer answer those questions or alternately occasionally we'll, we'll answer a question live if it's something that we feel would be beneficial for the entire audience this, uh, this evening. You have noted that we are recording this webinar as well. So we do record the webinar. So individuals that may be registered for the webinar that wasn't able to attend, uh, we can post them on our YouTube channel moving forward. Now, before we get going uh, too far into the webinar this evening, I want to take a moment um, as Lakehead University respectfully acknowledges that our campuses are located on the traditional lands of the Indigenous people. Lakehead Thunder Bay is located on the traditional lands of the Fort William First Nation, signatory to the Robeson Superior Treaty of 1850. Lakehead Aurelia is located on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe. The Anishinaabe include the Adawa, the Ojibwe, and the Petawana nations, collectively known as the Three Fire Confederacy. Lakehead University acknowledges the history of many nations holds in these areas around our campuses, and we're committed to a relationship with First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people based on the principles of mutual trust, respect, respectivity, re re sorry, and collaboration in the spirit of reconciliation. Awesome. So let's get going with some introductions on who's on the webinar this evening. I'm going to be your host for the first part of the webinar. So my name is Tori. I'm the Senior Recruitment Coordinator for our undergraduate recruitment and admissions teams. And I have two amazing colleagues uh, helping me out this evening. So first off, I'm going to turn it over to Julia and she can introduce herself. Hi everyone uh, and welcome to the webinar tonight. My name is Julia Crutzen and I'm the recruitment and events coordinator here at Lakehead University. And I'm not too sure if Chantel's on with us right now or not, but we do have Chantel joining us. There she is. So I'll just let uh, Chantel do a quick introduction as well. Hi, my name is Chantal Boutot. I am the Financial Literacy Engagement Assistant at LU, and I'm here to help you with all your financial needs. If you need help budgeting, money management, or just generic questions, feel free to um, email me after or ask questions after the seminar. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks so much, Chantel. And we know typically when we have a family supporters uh, webinar, there are a lot of financial questions. So it's great to have Chantel on with us this evening. That's going to help with those uh, questions and answers as well. Now, before we dive in too deep into the webinar, I wanna find out a little bit more about you and who's joining us this evening. Um, so I'm gonna put up a poll and see where you're attending from. So if you wanna take a second, you should see a poll up on the screen right now. Just give us an idea who's attending the webinar and where you're attending from. So are you from Simcoe County or the Thunder Bay region? Are you from the GTA, Ontario? Do we have people from outside of Ontario? And do we have any international attendees this evening? Don't be shy, host away. We'd love to find out who's attending the webinar. We're about, uh, three votes short of having everyone giving a vote this evening. 
don't worry. I can ask you other questions as well. Oh, so great to see if you have one more. Oh, we just need one more person to let us know where you're attending from today. Maybe you've stepped away for a second to grab a drink of water. Totally understand. I'm going to end that poll and share those results so you can see that we have individuals attending from a wide range of regions uh, today. So that's fantastic. Now, let me see if I can find... Um, yeah, let's do this one. So let's find out who you're attending with. So I know this is a parent and supporters webinar. So maybe you are the parent. Uh, maybe you're attending with a, a spouse, a friend, or maybe your, your son, daughter, or individual that's going on to Lakehead is also attending the webinar with you. You can uh, make note of that. Um, my favorite is attending webinars with pets. Unfortunately, when we're hosting, we're not allowed to have pets in the room. I don't know. I think we should reevaluate evaluate that. It makes for a super friendly webinar as well. Um, or are you attended by yourself? So just give us a, some more information on who you're attending the webinar with this evening. I'll just wait a second just to see if we have a few more responses. Awesome. I have one person who's attending with a pet. So that's fantastic. I always think we should have a sub uh, question on what that pet is. So I'd love to find out a little bit more about that. But just to give you some information uh, and to give us some information on on who you are. So this, as I mentioned, this is all about you this evening, families and supporters to get some ans questions answered on kind of what your next steps are, maybe as you're helping that family member through the transition on getting ready to attend to Lakehead. These are questions that you may have, you know, um, can I call my child every single day? What happens if they're homesick? Uh, are they gonna make friends? These are things that you may be concerned about as you're, as you're exploring sending that family member off to Lakehead for the fall? What happens if they run out of money? How much money do they, do they need? Uh, what if I want to talk to someone at the university? What information can I get? Who can I talk to? And as a parent or supporter, what can I do to support my family member heading off to Lakehead in the fall? So definitely, we know there's questions out there. We're going to address a, a number of them this evening as we go through the process. Um, we do talk about that cycle in the first year. So kind of as we as students come into the university, you know, kind of what that first year is like. And you'll see up on the screen kind of a, a flow chart on kind of the students coming in in September and transitioning. October is often a time for a fair amount of academic stress as they're getting into midterms and progressing through the semester. You'll see in December, again, they're writing final. So this is kind of something to think about as you're looking at ways uh, that you can support your family member transitioning into university and kind of maybe times when there may be some higher stress as well. We're going to talk a little bit later in the webinar on the supports that we have available to help your family member through those high stress times or maybe that transition as well. And so if you do have questions, we will address those as we move forward. I'm going to take a step back for a second, and we're going to start this webinar talking about kind of before you come to campus. So we've kind of broken the webinar into sections before you come to campus, transitioning into campus, um, and then once the students are on campus as well. And the first thing I want to talk about is a little bit about the admission cycle. So a number of you will be in a variety of different areas. Your family members may be in a variety of different areas through the admission cycle. Typically at this point in the admission cycle, uh, your family member has applied to Lakehead, potentially they've been accepted already and maybe wondering about next steps. However, our admission cycles is, a, is an ongoing process. And so students do apply to Lakehead for a fall start at a variety of different points throughout the admission cycle. In fact, we continue to accept students into our programs even during the summer months as well and make decisions on applications and the application process. So uh, step number one uh, for your family member is making sure they're well aware of kind of what their application status is. So you'll see up on the screen, there's some information around there. We are continually, uh, continually accessing applications at this point through the ad admission cycle. We are getting great information from high schools. And so that does allow us to do a reassessment. And we continue to do this on an ongoing basis. If your family member has applied to a program that maybe is a competitive entry program, 
or maybe they're missing a prerequisite for a program, we will always consider them for an alternate offer. So this would be uh, something that you you can be aware of that we will always consider your family member for an alternate offer as well. Um, so making sure when uh, your family member has applied to Lakehead, making sure they do have the prereqs. So sometimes students will come to us wondering why they haven't been accepted into a program yet. And it's typically because we're missing information from their high school. Uh, sometimes it's because they're taking a course course maybe outside of that high school and that grade information or that course information hasn't been transferred into um, the OUAC updates. So anything that they have questions around, make sure that uh, they reach out to us so we can see what we're missing or provide some information to them as well. So step one, check in their application status. Uh, step two, uh, your family member's been admitted. Congratulations. This is a very exciting time. And with this, they're going to receive an offer letter. And this offer letter is going to be available on my info. So my info is our student portal. And when your family member applies to Lakehead, they're going to get an acknowledgement email. And that acknowledgement email is going to provide them with a Lakehead username and temporary password, their Lakehead ID number, and their Lakehead email account as well. And that's going to give them access to what we call my services, my info. And it's kind of a portal where we're going to communicate with students moving forward as well. So their offer letter is going to be available on this. And it's really important that your family member reads this offer letter really carefully. Some programs, um, well, all programs, <laughs> the deadline attached on when your family member has to accept their offer of admission. And it's really important that the family member does accept their offer of admission by that date and then typically pay a, a deposit as well, so a $200 deposit. Many times this offer is a conditional offer. So a conditional offer means that based on the information we have from that student already, we will conditionally accept them into a program pending successful completion of a prereq or other things to move that offer from a conditional offer to a final offer. And so it is really important that you read that offer of admission uh, letter really carefully and be aware that you aren't fully admitted yet because you still need to meet some conditions uh, of the program. If you have questions, make sure you ask them. So uh, the next step then, step three, is to accept that offer. And if you've applied through OUAC, the Ontario University Application Center, you actually accept that offer on OUAC. And so you're gonna go down, uh, go to the OUAC uh, application, you're gonna select offers and choices, and this is where you're gonna see all your offers, and this is where you'll accept the offer as well. Doesn't take very long to accept the offer, but please do read through the screens. There are a number of screens that you have to go through to acknowledge things before the offer is fully submitted. Uh, when you accept on OUAC, that offer is accepted on OUAC, but it typically takes 24 to 48 hours before we receive that information from OUAC. So uh, there is a deadline, a recommended deadline to accept offers. That's June the 3rd this year. That's an, uh, a recommended deadline to not only accept your offer of admission, but also to pay your confirmation deposit, which is $200. You cannot accept your offer on OUAC and actually pay that confirmation deposit on the same day. And the reason being is OUAC, you've accepted your offer on OUAC, but we actually don't receive that information in our system updated until 24 to 48 hours later. So our system isn't enabled or allowing your student to actually make a deposit at that point because the offer isn't accepted on our end. So there are some ways we can kind of bypass that, but um, definitely it is recommended that it, you accept your offer a few days prior to that recommended deadline of June the 3rd to allow you to go into my info, my services. And this is kind of the screen that you'd be looking at, your, your student member, family member would be looking at to pay your confirmation deposit. So the $200 confirmation deposit that and holds your seat and confirms your offer of admission with Lakehead um, for the fall. So again, accept that offer on OUAC, and then about 24 to 48 hours later, uh, you'll be able to pay your confirmation deposit through my info. All right, that was a lot of information right off the get-go. Um, the next thing that we're kind of getting a lot of questions about right now is course registration. 
and students are really anxious and excited for picking their courses the fall and we're super excited to assist and support you with that as well. And so we do a number of, uh, of things at Lakehead uh, to assist students with course selection. So just so you know, uh, the academic calendar and the timetable as well as the fee schedule for fall 2024 is going to be available on June 3rd. So that's pretty quick. Uh, so on June 3rd, the academic calendar, the fee schedule and the timetable is all going to be available for fall and winter. So fall 2024, and winter 2025. However, students don't regist can't register for classes until their specific registration day. So as a first year student coming into Lakehead, the first day that students can register for classes is June the 17th. So between uh, June the 3rd and June the 17th, you can do what's called pre-registration. So you can look at everything, kind of, I always talk about it kind of like online shopping. So the store is open, I can load things into my shopping cart. So that would be my timetable, but I can't check out until June the 17th. It can be a little confusing trying to figure out what courses do I need to take? What's my timetable gonna look like? So don't fret it. We run this incredible program that's called FastPass. And FastPass is basically a pre-orientation program to help students with timetabling and scheduling. Uh, we run them on campus in Aurelia, so you can register for an in-person session at the Aurelia campus. We also run them online, so webinars just like this. Uh, so you can register for any of those. I do recommend you do register for a FastPass session because it does have a lot of information related to how to find out what I need to take in my first year how to timetable, what to do if I'm trying to get into a class that's waitlisted. So FastPass is a great thing to attend. The other question we get a fair amount is, is about classes. How many classes do I take a year? How does that work? So uh, at Lakehead, we uh, primarily offer honors bachelor's degree. So an honors bachelor of arts, honors bachelor of science, an honors bachelor's degree is made up of 20 credits. Uh, so typically students take five credits per year. Some courses, some programs are a little bit different. So engineering, for example, typically takes some additional courses, but on average students take five credits a year over four years, which is a total of 20 credits. How does that work on a timetable? So in the fall semester, students take two and a half credits and in the winter semester, they take two and a half credits. That, however, is a five classes per semester. I know it sounds super complicated. I've talked about five credits and five classes. And that's because our classes are either a half credit class so a class that our student takes for a fall semester or a winter semester is a half credit class. And then students can actually have access to full credit classes. So uh, some of our introductory classes, so things like intro to psychology is a full credit class. So that actually runs through fall and winter semester. And so students would um, potentially be taking a full credit class with some half credit classes as well. So generally the academic, well, the academic calendar will have this information in it. The academic calendar for your family member, however, is not available until June the 3rd. You can definitely look at uh, previous academic calendars to give you an overview of kind of what the program requirements are, but please be mindful that occasionally program changes do happen. And so we do recommend that you wait uh, until that June 3rd date, until the academic calendar for your family member um, program comes available. But just on the quick and easy, that is kind of like five classes in the fall, five classes in the winter, and then and that repeats. Okay, I'm going to take a pause for a second uh, just to see if there's any uh, questions specific specifically around uh, scheduling and timetabling. I don't think there are. I do really recommend that you do attend FastPass and I believe uh, Julia, thank you so much behind the scenes there, Julia, for posting some links in the chat to learn a little bit more about our FastPass sessions. And I do recommend that you register for one of those. All right, so I am going to pass it over to Chantel now, who's going to provide a little bit more information from a financial uh, and awards perspective. So Chantel, it's all yours. Thank you so much. I just want to add to Tori's point. Um, she did mention there, and I want to make sure everybody gets this piece, is you can go on and select your courses after that June 3rd date. Get it all in your cart, like she mentioned, like online shopping. Um, you will notice if errors come up. This is kind of important because then you can reach out to the FastPass team ahead of time 
or Student Central to see why you are having an error, they can counteract the problem so that when you're ready to go and 17th opens up, you can just press click, I'm good to go. You make those purchases kind of thing, like Tori was saying. So just want to make sure that everybody kind of understands that um, going into a question period. So we can answer some more questions afterwards, right, Tori? We'll do questions after. Yeah, I'm sure we will. Sorry. Yes, I am nodding and typing and doing slides. Okay. Yeah, we can totally answer Ooh, more questions as perfect. we move on. Sorry. No problem. Good. Okay. Um, so this is the big part about um I really like working at Lakehead because of this fact. It makes me super, super proud to work here. Um, we give out about $11 million in scholarships, awards, and bursaries each year. Um, scholarships are based off of school grades. Bursaries are based off of a financial need and awards are a combination of both. Um, so whether you're in Ontario or another province in Canada or internationally, there are some options for you, which is great. Um, this past year, um, out of the $11 million, there were about $5,000 that, well, there was only about $5,000 that didn't go ungiven out, which is super great. So there is lots of funds there and available to you. Um, there are some situations where if your average is a little bit lower, what you could do is you could still apply for the scholarships, awards, and bursaries that may be suited to you that might be in your community. I know that on the Lakehead website, there are some that are listed, but it's always good to ask questions with parents, guardians, or support people to see if they have scholarships, awards, and bursaries, maybe with their employer um, or just a friend or family member's business you might know of. You never know until you ask. And then also, we would also look at um, community engagement as well as in-school leadership. So sometimes you might could reach out to a guidance counselor for a letter of recommendation, or maybe they would know something where you can reach out to too. So lots of good options there um, coming from LU as well as surrounding communities. Thank you. So we do have um, two rounds as far as requirements go. We do look at May transcripts. Um, they are due by the end of April to check and see if you do qualify. Um, we also look in July as well, and obviously those will be available to you in July as far as averages go. So we look at the top six URM courses. Um, if you had over 95 percent, percent, sorry, if you have over 95 percent um, in July in round two and you've been awarded um, scholarship order bursary here, um, the, the top line there where it says tuition times four years, that is available to you. Let's say you get that. Now, come next year, entering year two, maybe your average has dropped a little bit. Let's say it's dropped to the 90% bucket. We will honor that and so on. You can't go back up to your 95 for full amount, but you can go back. So it is reusable. Um, so we can definitely look at that as well year over year to see if you do qualify for support again. So once again, you can drop down to the next tier, but there's lots of great levels here. So anything 80 and above um, will get you some form of funding from LU and they are unlimited. Um, there are a little bit of rules um, at the bottom, bottom, I should say, qualifications. So um, it, it is based on academic um, performance. There is um, a guarantee of funding for those people who are coming right out of high school, as well as you need to be a Canadian citizen studying at a high school in Canada with a minimum 80% average. So there are a little bit of, like I said, rules or qualifications, but we can look at that and they are renewable um, as well. We're gonna talk about the destination LU bursary. Um, this is another great one we offer at LU. So it's up to $3,000 um, in total there, as you can see. Um, the applications are from January 1st to June 30th annually. So open right now as well. Um, you need to demonstrate a financial need, um, be a citizen, so permanent resident um, or landed immigrant of Canada and have had no post-secondary um, education right out of high school student entering directly from high school um, in the preceding academic year. So people graduating this year and going to university at LU. And then the big thing is destination. So there is a travel component there. So traveling at least 250 kilometers to attend your selected campus to be considered for the travel bursary. So another great one.
Perfect. So this kind of shows a little screenshot and I know it's small there. Um, I'm going to leave my email address afterwards. If you do want to connect further on um, awards and bursaries, we can even do like a one on one zoom afterwards if that's something you need. But if you do go onto that website there, um, you go into the My Info section, you can go to My Awards to check and see. Um, if you're a recipient of an award, you will be notified via email. So you can monitor your student info um, on that tab there under the My Awards Financial Aid section. Um, like awards, et cetera, bursary, scholarships, some of them do need supporting documents, um, like a little bit of a budget. Like I mentioned before, some need financial components. Um, some of them would need maybe perhaps a resume or like a list of qualifications, that type of thing. Um, but all that you can actually upload right on that site too, which is really great, a little bit easy there. Um, and then LU is, I will note that we are required to inform OSAP of all awards that we're giving out. So let's say you do qualify for one of our great scholarships, awards, or bursaries. Don't worry. We will report that to OSAP for you if that's um, a financial avenue you're going. And um, if not, then you wouldn't need to worry about that, but we'll do all the reporting for you. So it's, I'm not putting another thing on your plate. You just go ahead and get those good marks and we are going to reward you for your hard work. We're going to talk about um, just some potential funding sources here. Um, I do want to note that remember, um, OSAP money is it's 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 not free money. You can apply for OSAP, um, and you can apply for the loan portion as well as the grant portion. Let's say you get um, a little bit of funding in both, but you um, saved up enough money working some summer jobs and received some parent or guardian support, and you decide, you know what, I actually don't even need OSAP anymore. I'm just going to go ahead and take the grant money. You can absolutely do that. You need to opt out of that option, um, and you can do that right through your OSAP website. There are tutorials online, as well as you can reach out to Student Central for some help, or feel free to email me. Like I said, I'll leave my email, and I can kind of walk you through that process. OSAP does seem like a lot, but it is a very easy peasy product or, or easy peasy service um, that we provide, well, the government provides. Um, it does take about 15 minutes. So it's easy to apply for and that is there for you. But if you don't have, if you're not applying for OSAP, um, maybe you have a little bit like of savings from summertime jobs. Uh, maybe you have a co-op placement or a work placement where you're receiving funds. So that's a way that can help you as well. Um, savings slash RESPs. So maybe you've got some savings, your parent guardian has some savings for you, or perhaps an RESP. So a reg registered educational savings plan was opened up for you. Or um, if you're old enough, you can actually open up one for yourself. Um, there are options within an registered educational savings plan, so an RESP, for somebody who is low income to qualify for what's called the Canada Learning Bond. What you can do at that point is go into a financial institution, um, open up an RESP, and you can apply for the Canada Learning Bond. The government will automatically deposit $500 into um, that account for you. You don't need to contribute anything. So it's essentially free money um, for somebody that does qualify for it. So kind of keep that in mind. Maybe do another look. Feel free to reach out to me again, and I'm happy to help you there. Um, and a couple big ones here. I did mention family um, or maybe friend support, that kind of thing, as well as various scholarships and bursaries. So once again, lots of great options out there for you. Um, and I am happy to help with questions if anybody has any questions. And if not, maybe we can hold till the end. I don't know if we want to do that or if we want to get into some questions now. Hey, Chantel, thank you for all of that great information. We're good for questions right now. So I think we're going to transition into Perfect. Provi uh, Julia providing some information around uh, once students are on campus, and then we'll uh, circle back to see if there's any questions at the end of the session today. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, so we're, we're moving on to transition programs. We're going to talk a bit about what we have available here at Lakehead, highlight one in particular. Just move to the next slide there. Um, so we have the university seminar, uh, one worth mentioning. Uh, your student can take part in over, over the summer months. Uh, the seminar introduces basic academic skills, so such as writing, uh, citations, effective study skills, and learning different strategies. Uh, it's only for first year undergraduate students and space is limited, so I would suggest looking into this early on. Um, it is online, it's self-paced, uh, 0.5 credit course, and the deadline to apply is July 5th.
Uh, so what do what does your student have to look forward to after they arrive on campus? Uh, so we're going to pivot a bit to see what what we're going to what they can take part in in the fall. Um, if your loved one is still considering residence or they've already decided to join us on campus, they've made a great choice. Uh, residence is an amazing life experience where they'll be able to enjoy convenience and safety with a uh, fun and friendly community. It will become a home away from home and uh, living in residence has also been linked to higher academic performance. So Lakehead University supports students with guaranteed residence to a single room accommodation. So you might be wondering what's included in that residence experience. Uh, resident meal plans include all access dining with rotating menu options and declining balances that can be used on campus eateries on both campuses for Aurelia and Thunder Bay. Uh, residents strives to provide students with a clean and safe home where academic success and personal growth are promoted. Uh, it's our goal to provide a community and environment that's rich and diverse. Uh, the residence life team does a tremendous job um, and consists of residence assistants, house presidents, uh, and coordinators who provide a wide range of opportunities that are both that are both social, educational, and recreational. So we're taking a look now. This is a glimpse inside um, each single room in Thunder Bay and includes a fully furnished room with a single bed, uh, desk, desk chair, lamp, shelves, bookcase, bulletin board, small fridge, waste and recycling container, drapes, closet, and dresser. Um, so all your student will be required to bring is bedding and any other amenities. Um, this is a front view in, in this photo is a front view of our Bartley residence uh, nestled along the McIntyre River and divided into the nine houses connected by a, a common hallway. Now to take a peek at what our Aurelia single room units look like. They are also fully, re uh, fully furnished with a bed, desk, desk chair, small fridge, and lots of closet space. Um, a unique feature of the units is that there is actually a semi-private bathroom that connects two units. So a little bit different from the Thunder Bay campus, um, but, but very similar. Um, so, we look forward to seeing all new students and family members on the move-in date of Thursday, August 29th. Something else to look forward to, um, and that includes staff here on campus, is our orientation week. Um, it's a great way to meet new people, get familiar with the campus and the university and have fun while doing it. Um, there are events that our new Thunderwolves can register for found on the orientation events webpage. So feel free to, to take a look at what, what we have planned and, and sign up. We encourage everybody on campus to get involved um, and involved in the community. So whether that be student government, leadership, sports, music, gaming, or volunteering, there will be no sh shortage of opportunities. Our team games are also a great way to join the pack and cheer on your Thunderwolves and join the action. And parents and supporters are always welcome. Lakehead promotes uh, a healthy and active, oh, pardon me, uh, <laughs> skip one there, but that's okay, uh, staying active. So Lakehead promotes a healthy and active campus life lifestyle while providing the opportunity to foster friendships, goodwill, and overall fitness. So whether your loved one uh, chooses to join a team or wants to get involved for the health of it, they'll be able to find what they're looking for. Now on to uh, the work study. Uh, you may be wondering if there are any options for your loved ones to offset costs while on campus. And happy to say that there is. Uh, it's the work study program. Not only will students be able to gain valuable professional development and work experience, uh, but positions are flexible and jobs vary in different fields of study. So additional funding can ensure educational expenses are taken care of and relieve some of that financial stress. 
We're just gonna pause here for any questions, just to take a look. We seem to be doing pretty good, Julia. We've yeah. been busy behind the scenes answering <laughs> a bunch of questions. So definitely if anyone who is attending the webinar this evening still has questions that uh, are needing to be answered, or if you're looking for some clarification on something that either Chantal, Julia, or myself has mentioned, please feel free to continue to post that in the Q&A. We will, uh, we are going through a lot of information, but we will make sure uh, that we have some Q&A time at the end of the webinar as well. Excellent. So we'll move right into our, our student supports. Um, so we're here to help um, from the first day on campus right through to graduation. Uh, let's take a look at some of our student services here at Lakehead. The first one to mention um, is, is our Student Central, provides students with a more convenient way to conduct business and access support in one central location. That you can connect with our staff in uh, to gain assistance with registration and enrollment, financial support, academic advising, and a lot more. Our dedicated student central professionals are able to solve issues from start to finish with improved consistency of service and answers. So they are a wealth of knowledge. Um, it's usually this is the first point that you go to and, and they're more than happy to uh, refer you to other departments from here, but this is kind of the hub when you get here. Um, to move on to another support is our Student Success Center. Uh, has many programs and support services in place to help with academic achievement and personal growth. Providing assistance with orientation and transition, student experience events, uh, leadership development programming and academic preparedness. Uh, your student will be able to connect with and receive the support necessary to succeed. So student uh, success provides writing services, tu tutoring opportunities throughout um, using in the um, academic support zone on both campuses. So student, uh, did, I'm not sure if we skipped a slide there. I just want to make sure. What was, uh, pardon me, uh, moving on to student health and wellness. I have uh, provides a wide range of services that include health and medical services, mental health and counseling, health promotion and wellness programming. So uh, student health and wellness creates an environment that facilitates physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual health. Our Lakehead community has access to nurses, doctors, and counselors on campus. So there is always someone to speak with if you need to access those services within student health and wellness. Student accessibility services uh, is also the staff collaborate with students, staff and faculty to facilitate provision of academic accommodations. So this means that students have the opportunity to access supports like lecture material, extra time on tests, assistive devices while maintaining academic standards and integrity. Our Indigenous services, so Lakehead offers culturally supportive services for Indigenous students, along with culturally support, supportive and comfortable spaces on campus. Um, they can explore, students can explore uh, academic workshops, uh, they can visit with elders on campus, access counseling services, or find funding and transitional support. You may be wondering, this may be in the back of your mind, um, what, what you as a parent can access. So we can provide information on programs and curriculum structure. If you have questions about registration and fee payment dates, we'd be happy to help and provide you with a response. We cannot, however, share grades per year status, financial records, uh, class schedules, or personal information relating to your student without written consent. So looking into August, what do we have to look forward to? It's definitely a busy month at Lakehead. Um, 
It includes work study program applications, transition programs, award and bursary applications opening on August 15th. So check my, my awards for more information. Uh, the commencement of field school as well as orientation registration begins. So make sure to check that out on the, on the um, My Success web, or pardon me, My Success. So we're here to help. Uh, if anything is overwhelming and requires further clarification, we are more than happy to reach out. More, we are more than happy to try and or to answer any and all questions that you may have. And again, we have another slide that is pertaining to questions. How are we doing, Tori? We're doing pretty good. I, I know we were kind of missed one slide in there. So I want to just back up to that. So the one slide, for some reason, magically disappeared from our webinar this evening was around our career and support uh, career and co-op services. So that's another fantastic department that we have on our campus. Our career and co-op uh, department office is really there to assist students right from their first year. Uh, so students that are in a co-op program, they assist students with posting of jobs. Um, they also help students with interviewing skills. They all go through resume and um, cover letter review. They host incredible job fairs on our campuses as well, both for full-time permanent positions, but also great summer jobs as well. So definitely a great department to connect with as, uh, as a student if you're looking for kind of that employment temporary or leading into your full-time job. We do have a job board uh, on the Lakehead website that does allow students to have access to it on an ongoing basis. So even once you've graduated from Lakehead, you still have access to that job board as well. And the jobs posted on our job board are related to the industries and programs that we offer. So we're just going to pause for a second just to answer some questions. And so, Julia, I'm going to put you on the spot for a second. I'm hoping you might have remembered this. So I know you were on the residence and housing webinar that we had last week. And one of the questions we had uh, was around when will we find out about residence? Uh, maybe when you're accepted into residence or do you remember anything that was discussed last week on the, the housing and residence webinar? I, I was going to say you definitely put me on the spot, but Sorry. I, I have, <laughs> no, I have the information um, available. So I'll, I'll look into that in the background while um, to answer. Sure. Perfect. So we'll get some more information on that. We are kind of in a holding pattern for residents right now. So for direct from high school students, you do have that June 3rd deadline to apply for residence. Residence is guaranteed for all direct from high schools that apply for residence by June the 3rd and pay your confirmation deposit. Typically, you won't hear from residents until after that deadline has passed, because once that deadline has passed, they'll start doing their um, the assignments of kind of rooms and houses and students. So it is typically a little bit later in the cycle. So end of June, beginning of July. And Julia is going to check on this to confirm that I am giving you the correct information. So I'll, I'll get her to fact check everything for me that I'm talking before you get some more information from residents. Residents then will provide you with some additional information uh, around your confirmation uh, for residents. Your residence fee is going to go on your account as well. So as you register for classes, it actually builds build an invoice uh, on your account. So you'll be able to see that all itemized. If you're coming into residence, your residence fees will be on your account as well. And residents will also then provide you with some additional information around um, move in and uh, like what did what time you need to be there and sometimes we get questions around like do I actually have to move in that day is the 29th of August the only day that I can move into residence if you do need to move in early or arrive a little bit later please communicate that to our residence office so they are expecting you early or expecting you a little bit later I do recommend as much as possible, however, that you actually move in on the move-in date. And the reason being is that residents on Aurelia and in Thunder Bay provide an incredible orientation program for residents, and you want to be there to be a part of that residence orientation and move in. Now, moving on to orientation, we also had a question uh, that I posted to answer live regarding orientation itself. So at Lakehead University, both our Thunder Bay and Aurelia campus, uh, we do run a full orientation program that does start around August the 29th or the 30th over that Labor Day long weekend. Fantastic orientation program. This really gets you not only oriented onto the campus, but also into our communities as well. So you get to learn a lot about 
you know, where to access supports, uh, what the, you know, do a scavenger hunt in the community, lots of fun events, um, really get comfortable on campus. Now, if you happen to be a Lakehead Georgian student, your first two years or potentially four years of your program are delivered out of the Georgian Berry campus. And so as a Lakehead Georgian student, you'll be timetabling and registering on, on our Lakehead system, but your orientation and move-in is actually facilitated by Georgian College. So they'll provide you with some information about orientation because that orientation is actually going to take place at uh, the Georgian Berry campus. All right, so I'm just checking to see, fantastic. So thank you, Chantal, you've been doing a great job with uh, answering some of those questions as well. Uh, so if there is some additional questions, please make sure you do post them. Um, so there was a question around fees as well. So uh, the housing fees are published. And so on our website, you can actually access the cost of tuition, sorry, the cost of housing for our Thunder Bay campus and our Aurelia campus, both our traditional dorm style residents as well as our townhouses. So if you're looking for that information as part of um, maybe submit in paperwork. It is available on our website. I'll see if I can find the link for you and put it into the Q&A as well. Um, and then our fee schedule will be posted on June the 3rd. So you can look at the current fee schedule. It'll give you an idea on what our tuition was this year, um, but our new fee schedule will be available on uh, June the 3rd as well. Julia, do you have anything else that you wanted to add? Yeah, I, I just want behind the scenes, I was actually verifying with our uh, residence coordinator. And um, the information that was provided was that after you pay that 250 deposit, you can pick a room. Um, if you're not from high school, they'll, you'll have to wait for an email after the 250 deposit and then pick a room that's not open at the moment. So I hope that I answered the, the question that you were asking, Tori. Was that the, that's awesome. behind the scenes? Okay. Yeah. If That's there are fantastic. any further questions regarding uh, residents, uh, feel free to drop free to drop it into the question and answer. And considering I have someone on on speed dial right now to answer those questions, we I can definitely um, we can definitely ask them and answer them. Right? How 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 amazing is that? That kind of just speaks to the Lakehead experience that uh, someone asked a question and we're like, let's just go right to the source. Let's just connect with residents right now and ask residents. They're readily available to answer that question while we're in the middle of a webinar. So uh, great information moving forward as well. Um, yeah, well, just, oh, what day do classes actually start? So that's a great question. Our first day of classes for the majority of the programs, okay? So definitely, again, this is something to be aware of. Our majority of our programs will start the Tuesday after Labor Day. I believe it's uh, Tuesday, September the 3rd. I don't have a calendar right in front of me right now, but I believe that is the date. Julia's checking for me and I'm just waiting for her to nod her head yes or no if I've got the correct date. Uh, so it's the, yeah, she says, fantastic. I'm like, okay, please brain, don't fail me right now. I'm hoping that's the right date. So our first day of classes for our majority of our programs will be Tuesday, September the 3rd. However, some programs do start earlier. Uh, so if you are in field school coming into our um, environmental management program, our forestry program, a few of our other programs will have an alternate schedule available. This information is available in our academic calendar. So if you go to our academic calendar, I'm going to see if I can find that information. It's really hard for me to find it when I'm talking at the same time. But um, on our academic calendar, there is a important dates um, and schedules. I'm just going to see if I can quickly find it for you. And it's a great way to kind of see what's up and come in. And so although your academic calendar for this coming year is not yet posted, the dates are posted. So you know kind of when your term is going to start. You know when those holidays are as well. So you can see all of that information in advance. You know when the, the exams are going to happen. You know when um, the break goes going to be. So I'm going to post that in the chat. Uh, and you can uh, have that information. So you'll see when you look at that, there's an academic schedule and that will give you the breakdown for our fall term. So it says right there that the first day of classes is September the 3rd. But it also says if you're coming into the professional education program, so that's just the Bachelor of Education, not concurrent education, that would be consecutive. If you're coming into our Faculty of Natural Resource Management or if you're coming into a Lakehead Georgian program, there are different dates. 
So please review the links on those dates as well, because you're running on a slightly different um, schedule for that. All right. Uh, so question regarding, uh, let's see, I think we're getting through most of these. So there was a question regarding residents at the Georgian Berry campus. Residents at Georgian Berry is not guaranteed. Uh, so students that are attending the Lakehead Georgian programs at the Georgian Berry campus would apply for residents um, through Georgian College if you're wanting to apply for residents at Georgian College. So there are some residents right at Georgian College that are, are Lakehead Georgian students can apply to. Uh, there is also lots of housing in and around Georgian College as well. So there's some private residences that are student residences that are not owned by the college. So you can apply for one of those and other off-campus housing as well. There's a ton of resources available on the Georgian College uh, website for housing at Georgian College as well. All right, so a couple of questions regarding um, uh, the portal. Uh, I, we did have some other questions. Um, so uh, I'm just going to back up a little bit. I know I, we see lots of questions regarding access in the portal and everything else. We I did have a question a little bit earlier this evening as well for an individual that was trying to register for the university seminar class and, and the link wasn't working. So a big thing to remember moving forward that you need to access this information using your Lakehead email account. So as a student now, uh, if you're a family member or supporter and you're looking at assisting a student student or family member, this is the time that you actually need to switch over from using your personal email account to communicating with us to your Lakehead U email account. So you have that Lakehead U email account is accessible through your username and password that you were given. So you would have access to that. Um, and then when you go to the Lakehead uh, website, you will have that option to log into your email through the Lakehead website. You're going to use your Lakehead username and password, and that'll give you access to your Lakehead uh, email address. As you're registering for classes, communicating with us moving forward, registering for your summer, um, the university seminar classes, all of that needs to be done with your Lakehead University email account because that validates you as a student. So if you're having problems accessing things, you may not be using uh, or logged into your Lakehead uh, username and password. All right, a couple of questions regarding... There's some questions regarding summer transition and engineering students. I'm going to leave that one for Chantal because it has to do with uh, financial aid uh, and Student Central. Um, Okay, parking. So that's a great question. So there is parking available um, on both of our campuses. However, you do have to apply for a parking pass. Uh, the parking pass system is a registration system. So you do need to register for parking and then you apply for a parking pass on the system. I'm not too sure which campus uh, this specific individual is coming from. If you're coming to the Aurelia campus, you do register your vehicle, your license plate on the system. And then our parking passes actually go on sale typically the last week of August. Um, and then they'll let you know what parking pass you've received. Uh, there are a number of different options at both campuses depending on the lot that you want to park in. If you go to the Lakehead University website and just put park in um, either Thunder Bay or park in Aurelia in the search bar, it will take you some to the parking information. So you'll find some additional information on how to register and how um, to access a parking pass as well. Um, Hopefully, okay, that's awesome. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know which camp. I'm quickly trying to read the Q&A as I'm, uh, I'm talking. So yeah, so the Aurelia campus specifically, we have two parking options available. Uh, we have a parking lot available right on campus. Um, and then we have a parking lot available within walking distance from campus as well. The main parking lot, I think is about $342, don't quote me on that. I'm just, again, trying to pull numbers out of thin air at the moment, uh, just around $350 for the full academic year. Um, and then we have a parking lot available at Rotary Place. It's a $200 for the, for the academic year to park there. Um, if you don't get a spot in the main university lot, we do have limited parking available. You are guaranteed parking at our overflow lot at uh, Rotary.
code replay. So definitely uh, something to check out. And you will need to purchase a parking lot unless you're looking at being creative at getting onto campus. So all of our students do get a bus pass. So students attended the Thunder Bay campus and the Aurelia campus are provided with bus passes. So that's another option for getting back and forth to campus. Maybe you want to go green and you want to bike to campus, depending on how far away you're living. Um, but lots of options for staying healthy and active and uh, getting back and forth to campus. Um, so parking, so typically par vehicles cannot be left on campus unattended. So if you are attending the Thunder Bay campus and you drove your car up in September and you have moved out of residence in April, the car will not be able to be unattended for the summer um, unless you're having conversations with security about purchasing maybe a pass for the summertime. However, it's probably not recommended. So at that time, I would probably look for alternate options on where you could potentially park the car for the summer uh, within the, the Thunder Bay region, if it is Thunder Bay. So I'm just assuming that you're talking about flying home, so potentially attending the Thunder Bay campus. All right, we're just gonna hang tight for a second and see if uh, there is any more questions. Uh, Tori, I do know that there was one that um, other people might be interested in, and that has to do with all of these webinars. Are they going to be posted somewhere? Should we speak to when the, when they should be able to see those? Awesome. Yeah, so yeah. we do have a YouTube channel. Um, and typically after the webinar, we do some magic to kind of clean them up a little bit. And then we do post them up onto the YouTube channel. So we do try to get that done relatively quickly after the webinar and then provide follow up for attendees of the webinar. So you can go into the YouTube channel and review information maybe that you've missed this evening. We, this is one of a number of webinar series uh, coming up as well. So tonight was our families and supporters webinar. We do have some additional webinars coming up. Uh, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. I know we have one on course registration. We have on uh, one on uh, fees. So how to pay fees, when fees are due, um, deadlines around fees as well. Um, so lots of other webinars to kind of get ready for like, hey, this is an ongoing uh, webinar series that we're running on Tuesday evening. So definitely you can check that out and register for another webinar that you're interested in attending as well. I will try to find the YouTube channel. So if I can jump off camera for maybe a second, uh, Julia, and I will just see if I can find some links. Um, if there's some information you're more than happy to add, or we can have some uncomfortable moments of silence. <laughs> well. So I'm just gonna turn off my mic for a second and see if I can find uh, the YouTube channel for us. Yeah, so for those that are that were interested um, in that last webinar that we ended up having, which was on residents, as Tori mentioned, it'll be on on the YouTube site um, as well as, but it'll be with I was I would say within the next um, week or so that that you'll be able to to view that. So it's just hang tight. Um, if there's any other questions uh, that that we that you'd like answered feel free to throw them in the question and answer or feel free to throw them in the chat um as we we've kind of shown we we're working the magic behind the scenes to come up with answers or verify information through a few channels of ours um so luckily we have a few people that are able to to provide all all of the answers that you may need um yeah can i oh. jump in Yes, of course, Chantel. Come on, come on in. Into come on in. <laughs> come on in. Uh, if everybody regarding parking, because there have been quite a few questions regarding parking, um, feel free to please just email me. I'm going to put my email in the chat for everybody so it's there, but it's financial.engagement at lakeheadu.ca. And then I can just take away any questions we have, get you actual perfect answers coming right from security um, for any campuses, please just include your campus when you email me because I am in Thunder Bay. Um, so let's just make sure we get the correct information for you, but feel free to um, do that. And I see that Tori's putting some links up here too, which is great. Feel free to email me though. I'm happy to help. So it looks like Tori, you ended up finding the, the Lakehead Recruitment YouTube. So that link is available in there. Just reviewing if there's anything else that a lot of people have asked. 
Um, there's been a few questions about residents and um, just looking at, just reviewing some of them. So much fun. I love when we get so much conversation happening. And, and again, really uh, grateful for my co hosts this evening. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff going on. We love getting the answers that you guys have. Hopefully as family and supporters, it seems like we've got a lot of uh, attendees attending this session this evening as well. Um, so hopefully we've been able to provide you with some great answers. If you do have further questions, I know Chantelle has posted her information um, in the chat. You can also reach out to recruitment directly as well. I'm going to post that in the chat. Hopefully I typed it correctly because I was typing it really quickly at that moment. But uh... I can confirm this. You did. <laughs> yeah. That's great. I love having my fact checkers on the webinar with me this evening because, you know, sometimes the typing and the brain and the talking is not working together. I'm sure you guys have had those moments where you type something out and you're like, what? That is not what my brain was thinking at that time. So awesome. Uh, I think that we have a few more slides. So I'm going to put a pause on the questions and we're just going to kind of wrap up this webinar this evening. I'm going to turn it back to Julia. Are you okay, Julia? Doing yes. a little bit more? Awesome. I'll turn it back yeah, to Julia course. and we'll uh, stop. We'll pause right at the end just to make sure there's no other questions still outstanding. Sounds great. So to ensure everyone's prepared for the fall, um, we can take a look at what the next steps are, what to consider. Uh, so we have some important dates to mention. That includes June 3rd, which is the residence registration deadline. Um, June 30th, we have the entrance bursaries deadline. Uh, the 15th is the fall winter registration and residence fee due date. August 29th, again, is the move-in date for residents, and September 3rd is the first day of classes. So we were talking about some of these deadlines previous. We should have just waited for more slides. <laughs> Um, if you haven't already ventured to campus, uh, we would be more than happy to have you either in on the Thunder Bay or Aurelia campus. Um, have, have, you can join us, book a tour, prepare and familiarize yourself with campus. Uh, we also have a virtual tour option online, so be, be sure to check that out if that interests you. We also have, we would love if you would connect with us uh, on any of our social channels to receive updates and announcements about anything from campus life to program updates. Um, there's a lot of great content uh, on any, any and all channels. And that actually concludes the, the last little portion here. So uh, thank you so much for joining us for the Parent and Supporters Night. Um, we do have a little bit of time, so it looks like we can answer a few more additional questions if you, if you still have anything that you'd like to answer, uh, to get answered. Um, feel free to send it in the Q&A or in the chat, and we can answer anything live. Otherwise, that, that concludes uh, the formal presentation for tonight. Awesome. Thanks so much, Julia. Huge thank you to Chantelle as well for all the support that you provided this evening. Uh, fantastic webinar. Hopefully it provided the information you were looking for. I'm going to challenge you, however, that now there's things you need to do uh, moving forward. So if you have that offer of admission, make sure you go through, accept that offer, pay your confirmation deposits, making sure that you've got that residence application um, as well. So do take the time to kind of look at all the things you need to do moving forward. Don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any other questions as well. We're more than happy to assist and support you. And the best part of all, we are so excited about you coming onto campus at the end of August, beginning of September. It's one of our favorite times of the year as we welcome students into our community and onto campus um, for this next amazing chapter of your life. So I'm just gonna pause for a second and just making sure we don't have any other questions. I don't wanna suddenly shut down this webinar as someone's like, I just posted my question and they closed it down on me. Just, so yeah, give me one sec. I'm just answering yeah. one. 
Okay. For sure, Chantal. So yeah, definitely, um, you know, continue to engage with us, continue to um, attend the webinars as well, ask us questions. Hopefully we can provide some additional support and guidance as well. As we mentioned, we have fast pass. So I do really recommend that everyone attends our fast pass session. These are great ways to get information on registration and uh, timetabling. So a great way to kind of jumpstart your university career. We have that university seminar class. It's a great way to get a half credit class done this summer. As Julia mentioned, it's a self-paced class and you come in with a half credit already done. So that's fantastic. Other than that, we want to thank you for attending this evening. Huge thanks to Julia and Chantel for being uh, on either side of me, assisting and supporting this evening. Hopefully we gave you all the information you were looking for and we uh, look forward to welcoming you on campus. So have a great uh, end of the school year. If you're in high school, a fantastic summer. And uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great rest of the evening.